Welcome to Question Mark, a safe place to ask dangerous questions. Today, we're in the midst of our worldview series asking the question, what is atheism? At its core, atheism is the belief that there is no God. An atheist might say that a little bit differently. They would say that it's a non-belief that there is a God, and this distinction is important. That they're not positing a universal negative, but instead they're simply saying there is no evidence of the positive side that there is a God out there. Now, just like everybody else, an atheist needs to answer their worldview questions. The first question is, what is prime reality? And Carl Sagan, who was a famous atheist from the cosmos era, said this, the cosmos is all there is, all there was, and all there ever will be. What does that mean? Well, in its essence, his prime reality is the universe itself, the physical substance that we're made of. He's saying there's nothing that's transcendent beyond it. There's nothing that was before it. There's nothing that will ever be after it. Prime reality simply is the physical nature of the universe, which answers a question of what is external reality? Well, somebody who is an atheist believes that external reality is in fact real. In fact, it's the most real thing that there is in the universe. If the physical universe is prime reality, then external reality is the exact same answer as you would find for prime reality. Our five senses then are the way that we interact with the rest of the world that's out there, and it's the most important factor for us in being able to understand something. If there is no God or transcendent power that's behind everything, then the most reliable thing that we have is our brain and our five senses. The next question that you need to ask is, what does it mean to be human? Uh, An atheist would say that a human being is essentially a highly evolved organism. It's slime that got lucky. It's something that started off very simply simple and it grew to become more and more complex and more and more organized over time. Human beings are real biological organisms, but there is no transcendent soul or spirit that's behind it. It's simply the organization of atoms that happen to make up brains and organs and lips and teeth and hands and all that make up who we are. At this point, Atheism splits into two key camps. On this side, we have nihilism, sometimes pronounced nihilism, depending on how German you are. Now, the most famous of the nihilists that are out there is Friedrich Nietzsche, a German philosopher. Nihilism basically is very honest about its atheism. It says, you know, if we are nothing more than a different organization of atoms, if we really are highly evolved slime, if we're an organism that got lucky over and over and over again, then really there is no value in humanity. And it leads you to the point of if there is no, if there's no substance that's beyond the physical, then there's really no meaning to life. There's no reason to continue on. There's no reason to be good to my children. There's no reason to be moral. There's no reason to be thoughtful. There's no reason to aspire to any higher ideals. The way that Nietzsche himself said it was this. He said, nihilism defined by any aim is lacking. Any answer to the question why is lacking. What does nihilism mean? That supreme values devaluate themselves. In other words, whenever you aspire to something that's a higher ideal, it automatically devalues the view that you say is real, which is everything is meaningless and just a random gathering of atoms. Nihilism essentially is despair. On the other hand, you have existentialism. Existentialism has been promoted by many philosophers, but Jean-Paul Sartre is probably the most famous of all of those philosophers. The essence of existentialism is this, existence precedes essence. What that means is you create meaning by what you do. 
where the nihilist says, you know what, I'm just going to give up in despair out of honesty about the meaninglessness of everything. The existentialist is more hopeful, but probably less honest. They're hopeful because they say, you know what, you can create meaning out of nothing. And it is the things that you do that become meaningful because they're the very things that you do. When Sartre was describing this, he said it this way, I exist, that's all, and I find it nauseating. Jean-Paul Sartre understood that the only thing that gave anything meaning was the idea that I existed and that meaning was invented through existence. So existentialists are the happy version of atheism. Now, under the category of what is a human being, we always have to ask the question, what is morality? And atheists have quite varying ideas of what morality is. One thing that they agree on is that there is no moral law because there is no moral law giver. What that means is that when it comes to morality, there are no absolutes behind morality. All there is is my opinion or your opinion. Now, atheists have tried to develop systems around this, like utilitarianism, but they wind up being awkward, untenable, unlivable in the way that you go about making your decisions. Morality becomes very difficult for an atheist. Now, that's not to say that there aren't moral athe atheists out there. There are many atheists who have decided to live lives that I would consider to be very moral lives. The problem is that you don't have a basis for morality. You don't have a way to determine whether something is good or whether it's not good, except for random principles, what your parents taught you, or what you learned in your culture. But these are not objective morality, they are personal morality. When it comes to the question, what's the problem with the world and what's the solution to the problem? Well, really there is no problem with this world. Some atheists will say human survival is what the problem is, or species survival is what the problem is. Because we're so unique, because we're so against the odds, because we got so lucky so many millions of times over and over again, we want to preserve humanity and preserve the species that there are in this world. And this is a logical outpouring of it. But there's nothing undergirding that that says that because we got lucky, we are more valuable than dirt or something else that didn't get lucky. Uh, we're just more unique than those other substances might be. But in essence, most, a most atheists can't contend that there really is a problem because there isn't something transcendent behind it and there isn't a value to humanity that's more than just the substance that we're made of. Of course, if there's no problem, then there's no need to drive for a solution to that problem. What happens to you after death? Well, after death, you die and you rot on the ground. And all of the atoms that made up your substance get burned in a fire or eaten by worms and return to the rest of the earth. And there is no more you of you left after death. Death is the final victor. Death is the end. You face death and you just cease to exist. So we ask the question, if you're an atheist, if an atheist is your worldview, what are the difficulties that arise with being an atheist? Well, one difficulty comes from the question of origins. An atheist can't answer the basic question, why is there something rather than nothing? An atheist can't answer the question when you go all the way back to the Big Bang and you ask the question, what made the Big Bang bang? There really is no answer to it. You can say I can go all the way back to that very first point when everything exploded, but I have no idea why there is matter and energy, why it exploded, why it became what it is today. Most atheists would contend that there is such a thing as a moral choice or a moral law. If given an extreme scenario like torturing babies, is that something that's wrong? They would say, well, yes, that's something that's wrong. Not just because I say it's wrong or because you say it's wrong, but because it is wrong. The problem is that's a moral law. And if there's a moral law, there must be substance behind that moral law. There must be a moral law giver. And the atheist has no answer to the moral law giver. The atheist has experiences that conflict with their worldview. So if you've experienced love, or if you've experienced loyalty, 
or if you believe the idea that there is a mind that transcends just the synaptic neuron connections in your brain, if you believe that there's something bigger than that, then you believe that there's something that's a bigger transcendent reality about humanity, and yet your worldview is that everything is atoms. If you're an honest atheist, you wind up becoming a nihilist, and you go through life without any meaning or any means for morality. To be honest, it's very hard to go through life without any substantial hope that there is in the world. Besides all that, I think that there are better alternatives available to atheism. Continue watching these videos and you may find one that's far more appealing. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click the like and subscribe below to see more things like it, or just go ahead and ring the bell and that will give you notifications every time another one of our videos comes up. If you'd like to see another video very similar to this, how about looking at this one right here?